Good morning, everybody. It is June 26th, Saturday. It's uh, 6.47 in the morning. Um, today is my one-on-one -on -one, uh, clubhouse um, hangs, and uh, I start in an hour from now, and I'll go till about 6 o'clock tonight. So, long day ahead, um, but I wanted to get some music in before I... Uh, before I hunker down, because there's no breaks uh, in the day to, to do it, really. So um, I just wanted to uh, just to say hi now at this point and get, get us started on a, on a little musical journey for today. Uh, uh, let's see, what's... It's, I'm trying to get my, my mind in order right now. <laughs> it's, it's like um, I'm used to being up early, but not having to really stay, be as focused got more tracks last night from people. I've got about six things to put bass on. I'm going to try to get done over the um, next couple of days. Get those uh, off in the mail. Um, dogs are sleeping. I'm not waking anybody up at this hour. They, they, they love to sleep in, so they're, uh, they're, they're tucked away. Um, I think around video number 106, somewhere in that area, is where I talked about the form, how the section formed, our, our band from the uh, very beginning days of, of my career with uh, Danny Korchmar and Wadi, uh, Danny Korchmar, Russ Kunkel, and Craig Durge. And so there's a whole explanation there as to what the band was all about and, and uh, how we came to be. And um, I did a couple of songs from our first album, but uh, I, I came across, I was looking around on YouTube last night and I found our third album. And uh, I thought I'd just do a few songs from that just to show. I mean, th this was such a, a kind of a vibrant period musically. Uh, uh, first off, in, in, in L.A., certainly, there was, it was some, as... One would say there was magic in the air. The uh, the amount of really gifted artists, the musicians, the whole musical community that existed, and uh, I really missed that. Uh, it was some really remarkable stuff came out of that period, and and I loved I loved our band. Uh, it, it became a real favorite amongst musicians. The record label had no clue what to do with us because um, we were in this instrumental kind of rock fusion band but uh but we had a great time yeah, so um and on this album it was the lineup of of the guys it was me and russ and and cooch and craig uh, but we also had um the great jim horn um sat in and and played a flute on one of the songs um joe lala uh the wonderful joe lala who's no longer with us uh, played percussion on uh, on uh, two, uh, I think it was one or two of the tracks, and Steve Foreman, another wonderful percussionist in town, played on one of the tracks. Um, David Sanborn and Jim Horn played um, on two of the tracks um, as saxophone, and um, Chuck Finley played trumpet along with that. We had a little section thing, not the section, but... A, uh, a section, and then there's um, one track on here where um, I think it was one or two. I have to go back and well, we're going to listen to it now. Uh, this the track I think I'll start with uh, at the end of it. Uh, David Crosby just layers in vocals on it, and James Taylor also um, sang on the record. Uh, we just called in all of our friends, and it was uh, it was great. It was really a fun thing to do, but. I mean, we just got in the studio and uh, counted it off and went for it. There was there was no um, no messing around on these things. It was uh, all kind of pure energy, and um, I loved it. I loved it. But I'm just going to go ahead and play a, a couple of things now. I'm going to play this one song here called "Magnetic Lady." I'm going to start with that. The fun part of this one is this is probably about. One, I, I could count on one hand and have lots of fingers left over the amount of bass solos I've played in my career. Um, it's just not not in my head to do it. I really, um, when somebody goes, 
take it, take it. Huh? I go, I take it out the door, I'm out of here. Um, but I've got a, a bass solo uh, in, in this song. And uh, so the first solo that comes up is me. On it. So um, this is called Magnetic Lady. Um, this is off of our third album called Fork It Over that we did for Capitol Records. We did our first two albums were with Warner Brothers. And then we ended up um, leaving Warner's and did this album on Capitol and it has a, a great album cover uh, by the great airbrush artist, uh, uh, Fred uh, Willardson. Who is it? Or, God, boy, I'm really a mess this morning. Um, Dave Willardson, sorry. Uh, Dave Willardson who did all kinds of fantastic poster work and stuff and, and the cover on this is just beautiful it's just a fork with a piece with a sl like a slice of pie but it's a, a piece of a <clears throat> of an lp on it uh, so check that out but let me let's go ahead and listen to magnetic lady and, and this is this has got my bass solo
Crosby. This is the only upload I found on YouTube, and this is obviously off of an album um, because you can hear the little scratching and stuff going on. So somebody uh, just recorded off the album. The fidelity of the actual record when you're hearing the record is is like completely ridiculously good. Um, but this is I just it's I'm great that this at least exists. This is really good. I'm gonna grab something else here. Hold on just a sec. Let's see what else we got on here. Here is here's a song called LA Changes. Let me get to the top of this, see if this works. Because I'm scrolling through, it's got the entire album now, so I'm just trying to find where tracks start. It's just LA Changes. <laughs> in a commercial. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Haven't had one of those in a while.
I mean, it's, it's interesting to think of that's when the audience came to hear like uh, Jackson Brown's Running on Empty. That was that was the music that the band played at the beginning of the show. <laughs> it's like, uh, but, but at that point, we had a lot of people that were into the band, so it wasn't completely ridiculous. Um, but it was really fun just to go out there slamming and just really hit the crowd hard with that. And then we would finish our set and then we would come Jackson would come out and the next thing you know we're we're playing running on empty and uh it, the, one of the most fun times was uh earlier on uh after the first probably after the first and second album I think that's when we did it because this album we did in 1977 but the first album I think we did in 72 or 3 um but we uh, we were opening for Mahavishnu Orchestra, so it was a complete evening of rock fusion and jazz fusion, and it was through that uh, relationship that I got to be friends with Billy Cobham and ended up doing Spectrum with Billy Cobham after the tour. So um, let's see this one that was LA Change. Let me see what we got here. The beautiful thing about doing instrumental stuff is you can call things anything you want. Titles are, you know, just titles. Um, here's a here's a song um, called "Hamsters of Doom." Oh God! Suddenly commercial. Someone who knows something about building a business set. Crack of dawn here, seven a.m. and it's.
mean, it's just so much energy. And got Russ is just playing his ass off on this stuff. And the real joy of this whole adventure is, to an extent, we're still playing 50 years later together with the uh, immediate family, with Cooch and me and Russ, you know, with having then Waddy being involved and Steve Postel. It's, uh, it's, qu it's quite a journey, you know, when I look back on it. But uh, a wonderful journey because I love these guys and it's just so much fun to be playing together. And actually now we're getting close to being playing, <laughs> which, is, which is great. Uh, let's see, I'll do one more song and then I got to get ready for my one-on-ones, which will be for the rest of the day. Um, here's one. This one is called Moon Over Fontana. Let's, let's jump into this one here and see. I don't know if this beginning here, let's see. When you really heard the record with headphones on, the fidelity is really incredible. This is this is like a couple of generations removed. Mm -hmm. 